Hey guys, this is Faye from Face World Media. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through Adobe Acrobat Studio. Now, before you think it's just a document management editing system, I wanna tell you all about this new feature that I love. It's called PDF Spaces. The four core features I'm gonna share with you inside PDF Spaces are gonna be Insights, Chats, which is your AI assistant, and for you to ask any questions, any follow-up questions, Three is notes and four is files where you can upload the files you want PDF spaces to study, to learn, to process. I'm really excited about recording this video and I will learn from you as well. Imagine the perfect world where all your documents, your PDFs, your docs, and even links from various websites with contained information can be aggregated inside a PDF space. Then you can create as many as you need to and then you're able to create your own bot, your AI assistant to ask any questions. I'm gonna show you a real world example using my mom's grant application. Last year in 2024, we helped her apply for the Massachusetts Cultural Council MCC's Creative Individual Grant and she won. And this year, the application is open at the moment. If you don't live in the state of Massachusetts, I'm sure there are other artist grants you can take advantage of and you can easily use PDF spaces to manage your files, to read through various grants that you need to apply for the upcoming year because we're talking about fall 2025 right now as I'm recording this. A lot of grants are just opening all at the same time. It's very overwhelming. I see myself creating different PDF space for each of the grants. I'm gonna show you exactly why. Because by dumping in all these extensive information, including recordings and transcripts of these grant sessions, explaining details of the grants, answering questions, those transcripts can be so helpful to feed into PDF space as well. So you can really build your own database and your own knowledge base. I'm going to take it one step further by transferring some of the insights that I learned about this year's Mass Cultural Council's grant into infographics and social media assets because within Adobe Acrobat Studio, you can directly connect to Adobe Express that helps you create these infographics and social media assets so easily. Hey guys, welcome to Adobe Acrobat Studio. To get started with PDF Spaces, look to the left-hand side and click on PDF Spaces. I've already created a couple of them and I'm gonna show you from scratch how to do this. To create a new PDF space, click on this button right here. If you're new to Studio, you may be prompted to check out this feature. What you need are some files, PDF docs, PowerPoints, text, RTFs, Excels, VTT, which I have no idea what that is. And you can also add links to various websites. In addition, copy and pasting text content as well. This is a site I'm very interested in showing you as an example for artist grants. I'm based in Massachusetts. Now, no matter where you're based, whether it's the US or frankly, anywhere in the world, based on the artist grants and call for arts as well, that these documents tend to be very extensive. Now, just look at the scrolling bar on the right-hand side. I'm gonna scroll fast here and you can see there is so much information. Back to the top. Now this is not special because most of these grants and call for arts for artists and creators tend to be very extensive. Now, all I have to do with PDF spaces is copy and paste this link into PDF space. Instead of just one link, you can actually paste as many as you need to. A single PDF space can hold up to a hundred documents or links. As you scroll down this page, you'll notice that there are frequently asked questions, tips on applying even sample application documents. There are even recorded information session, which I can pop open in a YouTube channel. Right now, I even have a plugin called Transcripts and Summary. So there are many ways to get transcripts from a video. Now, spend too much time on that. I do wanna show you what these documents look like. First, we have the application summary. It's a very extensive PDF document. It's helpful because it's showing the creator or the artist in this case, how to submit information for each category. Frequently asked questions. This is a lot of information all at once. Who exactly is going to read through the whole thing even though you should? Last but not least, tips on applying the grants for creative individuals. This is again, a fairly long document. Now, all we need to do is grab these links or in this case of the PDF, all I need to do is download it. Next part is the magic. After you build your space, you add in all the links, you drag in all the files. 
you will have, you would have created your own PDF space. It takes a moment to process. And here is where the magic happens. Look at all the files on the left hand side. Let me help you understand what you're dealing with. Here are the features I was talking about earlier. Insights, chats, notes, anything you can bookmark and reference back later. Lastly, files. So anytime you feel like you need to drag another files, you miss something or you want to get rid of something, this is where you do it. Now let's start with insights. So many documents, but what are the core information? Look at this. Even this PDF space knows that I uploaded one or two more documents. So it says new insights are now available. We have unlocking creative opportunities in Massachusetts. You have the eligibility application process, all the key information right then and there. We have eligibility essentials, who can apply residency restrictions, collaborations. Even if it's describing something that doesn't quite resonate with you and you want to ask your own questions, I'm going to show you in just a moment. This is why having a natural conversation with these chatbots and AI assistants, it's really essential. You get the idea, right? It's really distilling the most important information down here as part of insight. You can ask follow up questions such as summarize the application process for me, analyze common challenges, blah, blah, blah. Now I'm going to ask a question, which is, can someone who's already won the 2024 grant be able to apply again in 2025? That's a legitimate question. The reason is my mom already won the 2024 creative individual grant. I wonder if I can apply her again in 2025. Very simple, straight up. No, someone who has already received the grant in 24 will not be able to apply. Then even gives you this footnote information and tell you exactly where it got the information from. You can ask additional follow up questions as you choose to. Now, of course, there's a copy feature. You can upvote and downvote. I think I'm going to upvote this. It's very essential. Now, the next feature is amazing. It's my favorite, which is choose an assistant. By default, it's chosen by Adobe. You can switch it to analyst, a critical thinker. So there's different explainers for why you might prefer a different AI assistant, entertainer or instructor. Now, notice you can actually create your own. This is my favorite. In order to create my own, I want to say a grant. Let's be more specific, an art grant expert experience in applying art grants for her organization and other creators, artists, and individuals. Someone who is able to guide me, this AI generated description is going to be way more detailed than what I entered. Let me show you. You are an experienced art grant writer, consultant, provide guidance on how to successfully apply for art grants, organizations, including tips, identifying suitable grants. Wow. That's amazing. Offer advice on common mistakes. So I'm going to click on save and apply. And now this AI assistant is created for me based on my own knowledge base. By default, I already chose our grant expert. So I'm going to say, how can I position Xiang Li of xiangliart.com to stand out for the creative individual grant? This is a generic question. You guys already know that she won last year. She won't be able to apply this year, but I want to show you basically, wouldn't it be great if you have an art grant expert sitting right here, except for that she's not, but he's here in this document so quickly process all the information and respond with something of critical thinking, something concrete with stuff that you can actually leverage and apply for this. So look at this craft a compelling artist narrative highlight her artistic vision, demonstrate commitment and this and that. So now I'm going to say, by the way, Xiang Li worked at the Forbidden City in Beijing for over 40 years. She specializes in watercolor on silk, traditional Chinese art techniques. Now I enter that because the more information I can give to my AI assistant and our grand expert, the more it can help me. So look at that. It's going to go through the recommendation again, and now it's adding something extra. There's so much information. I'm going to have to scroll back up. So look at this focus on cultural preservations, which is so true because my mom worked at the forbidden city as a preservation restoration artist. 
And it says because as part of the MCC artist grants we're looking at right now, it actually will prioritize people who are considered as culture bearers and that will align with the prioritization who sustain living traditions within their community. So mom qualifies for that. I also highlighted her Massachusetts residency because she lives here full time and explore additional opportunities. So beyond MCC, Shelley may even consider grants from other organizations that support traditional art. Wow, interesting. Art is narratives. From here, I'm going to have a couple of questions to ask. What other organizations do you think should consider beyond MCC? Now, this is interesting because I haven't fed any additional information other than the MCC websites and PDFs. So I wonder if there's anything meaningful that it can give to me. Wow. All right. So the NEA, the Asian Culture Council, this is fantastic because I haven't really thought about some of this myself. Interesting. Now, as for every grand application or call for art or call for artists, you need to submit an artist statement. Help me prepare an artist statement less than 15 characters, not words, characters. These are the requirements listed by MCC. As I'm doing this, you may be wondering, oh, you're saving a lot of time. You don't have to write the artist statement from scratch, but I always read each and every one of these artist statements and make sure that I'm able to instill the information that are truly unique and relevant, not only to mom's experience, but also to the specific grant. Trust me with so many AI tools out there, these grant reviewers are familiar with what an AI generated artist statement will look and sound. When you add your own information and rewrite parts of it, it really makes it your own. On top of that, and the main reason why PDF space stands out is because it's not just writing information from the ether. By the way, I could argue right here inside the files section, in addition to all these mass cultural council documents, I could have submitted Xiangli's website, xiangliart.com. I can also submit mom's resume, any stories, even blog posts I've written about her that are similar to the grant. So definitely want to add those as tips for you to consider. Not only prepare a 1500 character or less statement, even ask me if I want to refine it further to emphasize on community impact, maybe future goals, and you create a list for submitting a complete and compelling grant application. The grant application for this one is not like a one page, half a page thing. It's not your local art exhibit. This is a state level grant. Look at that. This is a checklist as I'm submitting for the grant, I'm able to have a checklist of my own to make sure I included all the necessary information. What you don't want to do is halfway through the application process and they're going to send you a reminder to say something is missing. MCC does a great job, but not every grant, not every organization does. Sometimes when you miss out on certain images or you didn't really follow their guidelines, your applications are simply being ignored or neglected as a result, not being considered for the grant anymore. You don't want that to happen. I personally love the idea of creating a checklist and the PDF space is reminding me to have one to begin with. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. There's so much you can do. This is the tip of the iceberg. I love the idea of using Adobe Acrobat Studio to create my own knowledge base. I don't think this is just a PDF space. It's a knowledge space. I can create multiple of them. I can come back to them because these are essentially all saved. The more of these spaces I create in the future, I can simply come back to them and learn more and build on them. So I absolutely enjoy this. I also love creating my own AI assistant from the perspective in this case of an art grant or art administrator or grant expert, but maybe I will have a different perspective, a different opinion. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to learn from you. Please connect with me via the comments below and how you intend to use this. To get started, I'm going to include a link in the description. I will see you next time. Bye.